Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Infidelity and it's by user Array kind of lost here, planning to ghost him after finding out he's cheating on me. Found out my boyfriend was cheating a few weeks ago, been spiraling since, literally only running off of vengeance and pure disgust. I got this weird gut feeling and checked his phone while he was asleep. Those 20 minutes locked in the bathroom felt like years and the shame keeps me from talking to anyone about it. I moved across the country to be with him, I'm all alone, no friends or family here. He woke me up the next morning with kisses and breakfast and has been doing so a lot lately, probably the guilt. He even bought me flowers for the first time after me hinting at wanting them for years. He thought my quiet crying was out of happiness. He even brought up buying a house for us, something with enough space for potential future children. I'm still going through the motions, making his breakfast and protein shake every day, packing his lunch, making sure dinner is almost ready when he comes home from the gym. What makes me the angriest is that I really genuinely thought he wouldn't do something like this. He watched his father cheat on his mother and have children out of their marriage, all while she struggled with infertility her entire life. My partner isn't her biological son and never had her own. She dedicated her life to the two of them and passed away from ovarian cancer shortly after we met. Sometimes I think about whether she regretted staying with her husband or not. We have a small shrine in her honor and something makes me look at it and expect guidance. I love the man she raised and hate the one her husband did. But they're both him and he's a grown ass man more than capable of self control. So I decided to walk away. You see, almost every day my boyfriend sends me money for lunch, gas and a little something. I thought he was just really kind, but when I later found out he was cheating, I realized that giving me money made him feel less guilty, as though he didn't beg me to move across the country with him where I know no one. Once I found out, I wanted to immediately confront him but was scared out the outcome since the apartment was only in his name and again, I know no one here as I said. Now I just save every dime of what he sends to be able to pay for the $3,000 in moving fees to go back home without hurting my own pocket too much. Breaking my heart, destroying my ability to trust and scaring me off from men is something that I can handle, but messing with my finances? Nah, never. The transport company is coming next Wednesday to take my car and ship it back home. I also got first class tickets for me and my dog on his dime. Gonna keep up my happy act and do the usual cooking of dinner and scrubbing his back. And poof, on Wednesday, like I never knew him. He'll come back home from work and everything I brought will be gone along with me. It's the only form of revenge I could do that wouldn't haunt me. The only thing I think I might regret is not somehow being able to see his reaction when he walks through the door and realizes what's going on. Oh, <laughs> good riddance. Well OP, since this is more of a confession type post, I'm gonna give my opinion by saying that what I think you're doing is courageous. In the sense that personally, I don't know if I could act the way that you are acting by not saying anything and just vanishing like that. I would confront him or tell him that he's an a-hole or I don't know, something. And I think that what you're doing is clean and simple. And if it works for you to get over this douche, then good for you. So what about you guys? What do you think about what OP is doing in this situation? Would you have done the same? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they had to say. Realistic Brother 544 says, I am so sorry you are having to deal with all of this at this time after you moved for him and changed your life to be there for him. This has to be so difficult. Did you happen to take screenshots as proof and do you plan to share any of that with him after you leave? I think you are making a very brave decision to leave and not confront because without having a strong support system in place for you, he could manipulate you and make you feel trapped in this relationship. Good luck and would love to hear how this turns out for you. And OP responds, and it's not like us moving here has been easy on me. I've experienced more discrimination here than I have in my entire life and he knew it. That and how I only have one living relative and we're not on speaking terms. He could have just said he wasn't happy. I have a home that's paid off in another state. It's not like I would have no place to go and I was his burden. No screenshots, but he'll know. I'll try to update on Thursday and thank you for the well wishes. Jojo Weatherman says, So let me get this straight. You make his breakfast, protein shake and lunch in the morning and make him dinner when he comes home from the gym. Do you wipe his ass too? 
Sorry, but he sounds spoiled as he got you to move across the country too. He deserves the karma coming his way. You're more than right in your plan to leave. I hope you find someone who would not do this to you. And Opie responds, Well, when he broke his femur last year, I did, in fact, wipe his ass too. Sniff. He was always very supportive of my endeavors, and I thought making the house comfy and feeding him well was the least I could do to show appreciation. But thank you. I hope I do one day too. Kick White says, Please don't stay with him. Your plan is perfect. Don't let him know at all if you think you might be compelled to stay. A narcissist will pull out all the stops to try and keep you around to abuse, love bombing, threats of ending their life, rage and anger, physically keeping you in the house, not letting you leave. All I'm saying is, if you think he'll do any of these things, please run. Before you get married and have kids and get stuck to him. Why do you want to be hurt and miserable and always wondering if he's being faithful or not? You deserve so much better. Additional information from Opie's comments. A gut feeling told me to check his phone. I did it while he was asleep. I woke up randomly in the middle of the night and he's up to no good was all I could think about. I sleep like a literal baby and never ever wake up like that. I took his phone and locked myself in the bathroom while he was asleep and found it all. My first instinct was to say, he's not like that. But I also would have said the same if someone suggested he was a cheater two months ago. I keep looking back and thinking if I saw signs and ignored them. There was just one. After we moved, he locked all of his social accounts. He told me it was because he was moving up in the company and didn't want his personal views to affect promotions and I believed it. Or maybe it was true, I don't know. I'm guessing because he posted photos of me often and didn't want anyone to find out about me. I have to say that the thought of him possibly finding my posts just makes me want to post more for some reason. I know closure isn't exactly real and there's nothing he can say to me that will make me understand, but it's tempting. I'm also very tempted to get a nanny cam, especially since he'll be alone and I'll get one real peek at the true him. Now, I think he'll be surprised to see I'm gone and so are my things, but I think I'll leave a sticky note with a list of all the different girls' names, seven of them to be precise, and the apartment key beside it. Simple and effective, but he'll know why I left. I also didn't plan to contact any of these girls. Most of them were well aware he was in a relationship, so it doesn't make a difference. That was basically the only thing he was truthful to them about, lol. And I did get tested, it came back clear. Gonna get tested every few months for a while, just to be safe though. Finally, to those of you wondering why I mean by saying his dime, I meant the money he gifted me. Like I said in the post, he always sends me money for everyday things or a larger amount every week, even though I told him it wasn't necessary a long time ago. And he sometimes asks what I spent it on and I usually say food and send him photos from Yelp or buy clothes and send him photos, but then I return them later. I guess being the only girl in the chess club finally paid off. So I'll do what's best for me, hiding my desires and lying to him. At least I didn't F anyone and endanger someone's health in the process. Hmm. Alright, so we got some pretty decent community OP interaction and she gave us a lot more context. Now regarding the update is a curation of two different posts. The first part is OP sort of analyzing what's going on and the second part is the update. So let's move on with that and see how the story ends. As all of you probably know, I found out my boyfriend of almost four years was cheating. We've lived together for two years and I'm leaving him tomorrow. He just doesn't know yet. And won't until after I'm gone. As mad as I am, as betrayed as I feel, I still love him. All I really want is to wake up tomorrow and this all to just be a nightmare. I don't enjoy this slice of reality. That the person I loved the most has looked me in the eye and lied to me for who knows how long. And every time I do it, I'm left wondering how many times he did it. How many times did he whine, dine and F other women and come home to me? How many times have I been the stupid girlfriend who trusted her boyfriend blindly? How many times have I been some woman's laughing stock? Did he F us back to back? Did his friends know? Did they look me in my effing eye and really not say anything? Did he love them? How many times did he tell me he loved me and meant it? When did he stop meaning it? Did he ever mean it the first time? I'm not a master manipulator unlike him. I'm just composed because I've never had any other choice. Emotions got you beat or worse when it came to my parents and I'm more than aware I have a crap load of trauma to unpack but I can't. 
Not in self-pity, woe it's me, it's too hard, but no, I probably just can't. Therapists here are wildly westernized, and once I start with the short list, they'll probably just charge me double, maybe triple. And the last time I tried, he kept trying to convince me I enjoyed my own assault. Maybe I got cheated on because I'm emotionally inept. My intimacy levels are quite limited. The few times he asked about my childhood, I either A, brushed him off, or B, told him one thing I thought wasn't that bad, and he was so shocked I held out on the actual bad parts. And that's where the hate comes in. He knows what it's like to grow up feeling unwanted. He knows what it's like to lose your parents young. He knows what it's like to feel like your entire life has been horrible event after a horrible event. But he still did this to me and I don't get how he could. I could never cheat on anyone, let alone someone who shared such personal things with me. I haven't so much as made eye contact with another man since we met. Other people were just other people and we were us. I don't know. I just don't see being able to date again. I had deep-seated trust issues long before this and growing old by myself with 30 cats genuinely sounds nice. Hell, great even. At least I won't always be wondering when the betrayal will come. OP's final update. The transport company came and picked up my car, sold whatever big furniture I brought for low prices, took his dog to the park and played with him a bit, got him a dog cupcake and took him back to the apartment. Movers started coming for the rest of my stuff and I hadn't prepared for our property manager thinking we were both moving out and we hadn't given them the required vacancy notice. She came to talk to me right as my Uber was coming and I told her what was going on. Unfortunately, they had already called him because only his name is on the lease. He's called and texted me a few times saying he got a call from the property management and asked if I ordered something big and if anything was going on, but I haven't replied. His workday won't be over for a couple of more hours. I left my apartment keys and anything he's ever bought for me that I hadn't sold already. Didn't feel like taking that stuff with me. While packing, I remembered he bought a pet camera that shoots treats on the entertainment center and turned it back on. I promised myself I'll disconnect from it by midnight tomorrow, but I have my own predictions about how he'll react and I just gotta know for sure. Yeah, it's effed up. Sue me. Lol. I actually forgot to leave a note and was running out of time before my Uber came and just left the lingerie set he was so obsessed with on the bed. He'll figure it out eventually, or not. I'm at the airport now with my dog and just waiting on my flight. I wish I could say that I feel free, but I don't. Just tired. Thank you all for the good wishes and thank you more to all of the other women who reached out with similar stories. I think I might have caved and stayed if you all hadn't. Extended update from Opie's comments. I turned on the pet camera for about 10 minutes after I got back to my home and unpacked. He wasn't there, but everything was a mess. There was a hole in the wall, furniture flipped over, papers everywhere, and the kitchen looked like a tornado went through it. I deleted all of my other social media accounts, but didn't block his number. For the first two days, he called me over 200 times. Lots of novel-ass text messages and him admitting to some crap I didn't even know about yet. Quite a few calls from his dad and friends too. I didn't reply to any of them. His dad is an even bigger piece of crap than he is. I have no interest in reaching out to him or any of the people we mutually knew. And that's it. That's all we know from OP. So OP, I do hope you're in a better place now. I do hope you are not shut off from all relationships. Not everybody is such a big a douche as your ex. Yes, of course they exist and relationships are a gamble in some sort, but having one with the right person is awesome. Once again, I wish you all the best in the future, OP, and thank you so much for sharing. Take care. Now let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user Breeder Joey. Try and stick to the planning and the correct methods. Sure, I will. I, 30 male, work as a cleaner in a school for special needs children. I'm good at what I do and I take pride in coming in every day to make sure that both the children and the teachers that work there have a clean and safe environment to work in. Some backstory. Before I started working at this location in April 2022, they've had a lot of bad luck with hiring cleaners, as the branch we're in technically falls under specialized cleaning and not general cleaning. In the first four months of 2022, they've had 15 cleaners that all disappointed, stopped showing up or were fired for another reason. This has caused the general custodian of this special needs school, my direct supervisor, to be skeptical of any new cleaner that comes in, which is very fair. 
Now, I like to give 110% at work. Whether that's smart or not, I'm not sure, but I want to leave my work knowing that I gave it my all. That is why, when I saw the daily weekly task list and had done an online course on how to effectively clean, I knew that in practice that would leave a very messy workplace, since not everything would be cleaned correctly. Imagine a desk of a child that has a single eraser on it. According to my online course from the company, that qualifies that entire desk for cleaning. I won't be allowed to clean it. Furthermore, if chairs are not at the desk, I can now sweep or mop under them, because it's not the cleaner's job. As such, I've been making some really positive changes to my work schedule, daily and weekly task lists, and the way that I do things to not only meet the minimal requirements that my company asks for, but also to go above and beyond. Be flexible with the teachers, engage with the students, and leave a beautiful workplace. This went great for a while. Now, the custodian has, for some reason, been getting way more critical of my work. The smallest speck of dust missed or a small drop of coffee spilled somewhere that happened after I was done with work and he's blowing up my phone with text messages that I need to do things differently in a wasteful way or telling me first thing when I come in that I need to take my work more seriously. This morning he told me, try and stick to the planning and the correct methods. So I told him that I would. Now, I started to follow the paper list with daily tasks and my methods completely to a T. Every half-assed method I knew would leave the classroom and the bathrooms in a horrible state. Trash cans need emptying? Nope, not on my list. One piece of paper on a filthy desk? No longer my problem. Spills in the hallways? Looks like mopping the floor isn't on today's task list. Sorry. The entire place looked horrible. I had to hold myself back to not do more than the list because I hate leaving work unfinished. But I was finally done. I approached the teachers of the classrooms that I had to clean today beforehand, explained the situation and promised them to give their classrooms a proper cleaning the next day because they and the students shouldn't be victim of my malicious compliance. But they were in on it. They even agreed to give their signature on my task list to sign off that they think I did all of the work correctly. Naturally, the custodian didn't like my work today, and we had a good heart-to-heart -heart for a moment. I told him that I really appreciate that he wants to safeguard the quality of my work. It's what they pay me for, after all. But I hope that I have shown him, and some teachers, that I go above and beyond daily, and that today's work, that looked like a mess, was my company's standard. I also let him know that the constant badgering was incredibly unmotivating. It was really putting a damper on my spirits. I told him that I'd be doing my work normally again tomorrow and he said he appreciated all the work I usually do and that he'd try to be more flexible as well and put more trust in me. All's well that ends well, I suppose. I just want to make sure that these special needs children have a clean school to learn, laugh and play in after all. Wow, OP, this malicious compliance is absolutely awesome. Not just because of the work that you do and how you love it, which I think is admirable, but also because your boss understood he had a moment of growth and now he's on your side and I think that's fantastic. So thank you so much for sharing, OP. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.